So that's Andreas. And if I'm right, uh, Sebastian. And if I'm right, because I have the code names, of course, Tamara. In their presentation, they have their real names, or something like that. <laughs> okay, their uh, presentation is actually about the tool. And we all know that um, we use electronic gadgets everywhere. And, but we're not aware about what actually the human cost is of all these things. And they are developing a tool that shows us this information. And it could pr probably and hopefully help us a lot in defining what things we're going to use in our daily life. Um, I want you to give them a welcome applause. Please go ahead. Good morning. Thanks for getting up early and uh, coming here. We're really grateful for that. Uh, I'm Sebastian. This is Tamara. This is Andreas. Um, um, and we are building a tool, a software tool for easy supply chain risk analysis. And I will start by um, talking about the background um, uh, of all this, what kind of risks we analyze and why. Um, Andreas will talk more about uh, how we do the analysis and then tomorrow we'll talk about our project Fairtronics. Um, so the first thing I want to do is unpack this um, the slogan a little bit. Supply chain is um, basically all the steps that happen to a product before it is a product, right? It uh, starts with resource extraction and then um, somehow components are being made or assembled and at the end you have maybe a mobile phone or an Arduino or something like that. Um, and uh, when you're doing supply chain, uh, you work with supply chains, basically, you have to acknowledge that electronics production happens all around the globe. So that's a major like, thing that makes it complicated. Um, risk in the sense of social risk. So what we want to do is minimize harm that is, that is caused to people involved in the production of electronics devices. Um, Analysis in the sense that we compute it, so we have a computational model um, of what kind of um, harms, risks are in the supply chain of a product. And the whole thing is supposed to be easy. Um, and easy is meant in the sense that um, uh, you do not need to collect extra data. If you are designing an electronic product, um, the tool should work only with the data you already have. Um, as I said, um, supply chains are global. Making electronics products is a global affair. Basically, anything, any, any product you can think of will probably <laughs> um, involve uh, four to five continents, such as this uh, smartphone here, which is uh, a pretty typical case. Um, it basically starts with resource extraction with, at the blue-green dots um, and, and resources or like yeah, raw materials are located all around the globe, so they come from South America, North America, Africa, Asia, and so on. Um, and then processing and manufacturing happens in a lot of other places, so basically the material for any product is shipped around the globe like, like crazy. Um, and the, the background of our work is uh, essentially sustainability. Um, you may have heard of this model of sustainability that is made up of um, three pillars, um, the social pillar, the environmental pillar, and the economic pillar. Um, and, uh, you know, many people associate sustainability mainly with the environmental aspect, making things ecological, not emitting too much CO2, and so on, and that sometimes leads to the social aspect of, of sustainability being a little bit uh, underrepresented. Um, social um, sustainability means um, avoiding harm, you know, improving people's well-being, and so on. Um, and that is exactly the aspect um, that is most important to our work. Um, so what about the social sustainability of electronic supply chains? Um, um, basically, um, you know, across all the stages of a supply chain, um, you can find a, a whole huge catalog of, of human rights violations and, and other problems um, that are associated 
with the making of electronics products, from having to work in dangerous conditions, for instance, being uh, poisoned by toxic chemicals or being harmed uh, in, you know, when there's not, when there are, the safety precautions are not, not sufficient. Um, being forced to work, for instance, uh, because people are in so much debt that they need to repay. Um, children having to work, uh, people not being able to, fo to um, form unions, uh, having to work too many hours or not making a living wage even though people work um, you know, 10 or 12 hours or more a day. Um, being displaced from uh, one's home, uh, for instance when mines are being established or extended then it frequently happens that the people that have been living there are forced to move. Um, being discriminated against or not uh, enjoying social security such as um, you know, being able to take time off when you are sick. Um, for instance, in gold mining, um, uh, many of these uh, cases are um, well documented. Um, child labor happens um, in very, very many places. Um, and uh, also, you may be aware that uh, mercury is frequently used to extract gold when, when, when gold is being mined. Uh, and of course, mercury is uh, toxic and sometimes, uh, you know, safety precautions are not taken and people get poisoned and the environment gets poisoned. So this is, these are just two simple examples to make it a bit more plastic. Um, and the big picture is that the digitalization which we enjoy and, and celebrate here at Congress um, happens on the backs of the people who make these electronics. So how can we fix that? Um, I want to go through three example steps, you know, three puzzle pieces of the solution. Um, the first one is that there do exist some certifications that rule out certain human rights violations. For instance, you know the fair trade um, label from bananas or a coffee or whatever, <coughs> and there exists a fair trade certification for gold. There also exists another certification, Fair Mind, also for gold, and um, yeah, these do rule out a, a good part of these human rights violations. Um, there's another standard, IRMA, which is in the process of being established, um, which applies to more metals um, or yeah, more materials that, are, that, that come from mining. <coughs> but the problem with all these certifications is that they are not broadly available. Um, so in each case, there only exist a few mines that have a certification, and most of the mines don't. Um, uh, so another way to put this is that there does not seem to be a huge demand for certified um, metals at the moment. Uh, and I think this is like one of the things that need to change. Um, uh, a second example is that uh, when you are the designer of an electronic product, of course you get to decide what goes into that product. And you make a lot of design decisions. And of course these decisions um, determine um, what kind of raw materials are needed to build your product. Um, so this is a fun little example. This is a DIY mobile phone. Um, so this, this phone was built in a fab lab. Um, and uh, at the back of the phone, you see these two little knobs sticking out. And these, these little knobs are capacitors. They are aluminum capacitors because the person who built this phone did not want to use tantalum capacitors because tantalum is well known to be associated with the whole catalog of um, human rights problems. Um, so yeah, here you can very clearly see this design trade-off between making the phone a little bit thinner or avoiding the use of certain resources. Um, <coughs> many metals can be recycled. Not all metals do get recycled because it's not always cost effective. Um, and, but of course, if it's, when it's being done and when it's possible, um, recycling is a good way to reduce the overall amount of resources that are being extracted. Um, it's why isn't, is it not always cost effective? I think this is again partly a matter of supply and demand. You know, when there's a larger demand for recycled metals, then it will become cost effective to recycle a larger amount of them. 
Um, so, so the general message is there do exist alternatives, um, but then the question is why, um, you know, why do I keep telling the, uh, you there's no demand? Why is there no demand? Why do not all people, you know, try to source their materials re responsibly? And part of the answer is that uh, electronic supply chains are um, very complex and very deep. Um, this is a, a supply chain taken from the Naga IT project, a very nice uh, project which is also a pioneering project in um, you know, fair electronics. Um, and, and they tried to build the most uh, sustainable computer models possible. Um, uh, so they took the mouse because it's a very simple product um, and they try to map out their entire supply chain as far as possible and you can see that even for the simple product there's the basically the, the, the supply chain chart is overwhelming um, and you as a, as, a, as a designer or as a, as a maker of an electronic product you are basically at the top of the supply chain and you kind of have to look backwards and see what your suppliers are and what are their suppliers and so on and um, with, with this huge amount of steps um, it's very difficult to know where to start and this is where our tool comes in and Andy will now tell you a bit more about how that works okay thank you so yeah, we have learned now that uh, yeah, there exist severe issues in, in the production of electronics devices, severe social issues. Uh, we want to do something about this, and, uh, but we have also seen right now that it is not an easy task, that it is complex, that supply chains for electronics products are complex and deep. And so, yeah, the question is where can we start? And uh, one thing that we, or that someone as a uh, designer of an electronics products does know is uh, yeah, the, the components that go into an electronics products for, product. For example, here the computer mouse, uh, you can see it's made from the casing, there's the cable, there's the circuit board, there are, are um, resistors. Uh, that, that go into it and so this is one thing that we know and so the idea for uh, our tool is that you can feed this component list uh, maybe you have a bill of materials available maybe you can just disassemble a, a device uh, and feed it into uh, our Fairtronics tool and get a hotspot analysis that tells you where are where's the highest risk where are the, the hotspots for social issues in your device so how could this um, how could this be done? And I will walk with you through some steps uh, to to make this more tangible. Uh, like I said, one uh, component in our computer mouse uh, is the resistor. And if we take the resistor, uh, we can. Um, uh, start collecting generic data. Uh, what the consist uh, what the resistor is made of uh, there's some copper uh, flowing uh, part of the resistor there's some iron part of the resistor and one example for a data source that you can see here uh, is from an environmental assessment of um, mm, generic or average uh, electronics components and there is uh, here what you can see here listed is the uh, yeah, the materials that an average resistor consists of in weight. For example, copper, it's made of, uh, from 61.71% uh, 61 uh, 61 of copper or 12.49% uh, of iron in weight, an average resistor that we see here. Okay, so now we know something about the composition of one component. And when we follow that trail and say, okay, a large part of our, of our component is copper, uh, we can ask, where does the copper come from? Um, and here's another example of a data source that uh, tells us something about this. It's from the US Geological Survey, and they publish uh, yearly estimates about the global production of uh, different minerals. Um, and you can see that in 2018, 
uh, Chile produced uh, 5.8 million tons of copper, or Congo produced uh, 1.2 million tons of copper in 2018. Uh, these are estimates based on uh, publications from different uh, firms or governments about, about their copper production. Um, okay, so we can assume okay, a certain amount uh, of the copper that flows into our, uh, into our component, into the resistor, uh, comes from Congo. And now we can ask, okay, how are the working conditions in Congo? Uh, are people getting fair salary there? Uh, how long do they have to work? Uh, is there child labor possibly involved? Uh, is there forced labor possibly involved in Congo? And there, um, you can all find quite some data on this country level that tells you something about working conditions in different countries. And also our observation is that the situation is improving here about the data quality that you get uh, since, especially since the uh, UN uh, sustainability goals were established. Uh, you can find more and more better quality data about uh, social conditions, working conditions uh, in different countries. And here's one example uh, from the International Labour Organization. They also uh, publish uh, a report on um, estimates about, uh, in this case, the working poverty rate. So the share of people that do work um, that still live below the poverty line. And uh, uh, in this case, we are, we are interested in Congo and see, okay, this rate is 70%. So 70% of the people in employment still don't have enough to live. Um, and a huge part of our work is to collect this data, to collect data about raw material composition of electronics components, to collect data about production rates of these raw materials in different countries, and to collect data about the indicators that tell us something um, about, uh, about the working conditions in these countries, uh, bring them in a common format and yeah, collect them in our database. And as soon as we have this data, we can yeah, start asking some questions and, and do some basic computations. Uh, for example, we might be interested in the significance of copper produced in Congo. Um, well, when we say, okay, uh, well, Congo's share in world, in world production of copper is 5.81%, and uh, the share of copper in our resistor weight uh, is 61.71%, uh, we arrive at 3.58%, and we could uh, interpret this as something like medium activity, so anything uh, we can say, okay, around 3.58% of copper in our resistor, we can assume, stems from Congo. And, um, well, it's between 1 and 10%, so quite significant. It's medium activity, um, uh, quite important for our resistor. Anything that's more than 10% would be a high activity. Anything below 1% uh, would be low activity, just to, to qualify this a bit. And then, uh, how severe are the impacts in Congo? If we take our example of fair salary, we have that example of working poverty rate of 70%, which is among the top 25% of rates for all the countries that, uh, that we have for this indicator. And this is just a qualification that we can make in the, at this point and say, okay, anything that is, uh, any rate that is among these top 25% of rates is high impact. Um, and if we do this for our whole product, for the computer mouse, uh, we can actually see that copper is not only the most prevalent metal in, in the, in, in the uh, resistor, but in, for the whole computer mouse, uh, mainly due to the cable. Um, so, well, copper is quite prevalent in our computer mouse. And uh, we also identified a social hotspot from the data that we just had, that is uh, the copper extraction in Congo. And uh, the impact category that we looked at is fair salary. And one interpretation from this uh, analysis would be, OK, if we find a source of fair copper, of certified copper for the cable, 
or find uh, some some producer of cable that's cables that is willing to work with us in improving the, the situation that would be a big step forward for the fairness of the of the computer mouse um, now there are some limitations from this approach that I w would like to, to point you to. Um, for one, yeah, it's an assessment on a very, very generic level, so you should take this uh, with a grain of salt. It's just to highlight hotspots, uh, to highlight those areas where it's worth looking deeper and uh, try to, to identify the real issues that lie behind us. This. In a whole approach, we follow a uh, methodology uh, called social life cycle assessment, which is similar to environmental assessments of products. Uh, so you look at the whole supply chain or the whole life cycle of a product, and in an environmental assessment, you are interested in the CO2 emissions or in the water use th that happens during the whole life cycle. And in our case, uh, we have just different impact categories. So the impact category is not water use or CO2 emissions, but direct social impacts. And that these are the ones that we are focusing on. So anything related to workers, freedom of association, working hours, forced labor, health and safety, social security, equal opportunities, child labor, and fair salary. And also, as you can see from the example, uh, we are focusing right now just on the raw material extraction phase in the future, uh, this should be extended also to cover other life cycle phases to get to a full assessment, social assessment. Okay, and now I'll, I will pass on to Tamara, who will tell you more about our project and the tool that we are developing. So, thank you. Um, now that Sebastian already told you why, we are working on this project, and Andy told you how we are doing this. I'd like to show you a bit of what we've done already. So we're building a web-based analysis tool to identify social hotspots. Um, you can see a screenshot of the current work in progress of it. It should be um, an MVP should be done by the end of February. Um, and to revisit that example for the computer mouse, here you can see that the component that you should look at first is the data cable, and then that if you find a sustainably sourced or fair copper for, for your product, that would be a significant improvement. Um, <coughs> and now you may be all wondered, that is really great, and how can I contribute to it? So first of all, to all the makers of electronic products, it would be great if you let us know what kind of tools you currently use, um, in what formats you export. You could just send us your bill of material list or PCB layout so we can offer templates because we want it to be really easy to use. So um, another thing is just use our tool by the end of February. Give us feedback. Tell us what functionalities are working for you, what are not, and yeah. And another thing is we're an open source project, we'd love to collaborate. So if you have time on your hands and you're motivated and you're passionate for the subject, just join us. <laughs> um, and you can find us on GitLab, here's the link. Um, <clears throat> a very crucial matter is the procurement of data. Um, without data, we cannot conduct an analysis. Um, and our current database is rather tiny and a lot of manual labor went into it. And even though, even though there have been significant improvements concerning um, open source data for social um, indicators, um, it's, they're still not in a standardized format to feed them into a coherent system quickly. Um, and then another thing is the um, raw materials that constitute components. There it's even harder to, to find something. So if you're in the possession of data, if you're probably a manufacturer and you have lists, um, or if you just love to extract data in an automated way, um, yeah, let us know. Um, and the last thing is talk about it. So even if you're not a, a, a maker yourself, um, yeah, like spread the word, talk with people about it, and the more people know and think about it, hopefully, um, the more can be done. And if 
it's at, at the bare minimum more more conscience towards this topic. Um, and to wrap up this talk, um, I'd like to reiterate what Sebastian said in the beginning. Um, currently in the production of electronic products, human rights are violated at almost every step of the supply chain and this must not be the case and this does not have to be the case. As he said earlier, there are alternatives. Um, you can use certified raw uh, you can use uh, materials from certified mines. You can actively take worker conditions into consideration in the design process and you can use recycled material if, po if possible. But most importantly, you can increase the demand for um, sustainably sourced raw materials and a fairer production of electronic products. And here's also our contact information, so feel free to write us an email or you're here, we're here, you can come and talk to us. And I'd also like to thank the Prototype Fund at this point because they have been funding us so far and that was a great help. Yes. Thank you and thank you for your attention, your interest and your time. Super. Thank you. Wow. Oh. You can be really proud uh, about your product, really. Um, I wonder if there are questions here um, among our audience who is really clearly woken up <laughs> and fresh. And to the point, ah, here, Mr. Uh, number two. Yes, please. Is it on? Ah, no, it's on. Okay. Um, uh, collecting data is a difficult task, as you just said. So I wanted to ask if you share it with other databases like Wikidata or another open data source, mm. or if you like only keep it to yourself because uh, it's too hard to actually connect to other data sources. Well, uh, technically, it, uh, we're working on a, on a uh, um, to, to have a REST interface for, for, for the data that we collect, and we happily share it. For some, we are not sure if we are allowed to share them. Uh, so if there's some expert here uh, concerned with well, uh, property rights of databases, that would be great to talk about them, but we happily share the data that we can. Yeah. And if, if you want to connect here, great. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm here at number one. Thanks a lot for the presentation, and I'll probably send you some bill of materials soon. <laughs> Um, I've got one question. I know that uh, Fairlöted uh, offers the Stanol uh, soldering tin, uh, but do you also plan to offer solder paste? Because for all SMD assembly, obviously, it's not uh, possible to use that Fairlöted uh, product. Um, yeah, okay. So, to, for, for context, um, basically, that was our inaugural project at Fairlöted. We're an association that uh, um, works on fair electronics and uh, yeah basically the first project we did was um, uh, we, we got together with Stanul which is a maker of solder products um, and designed a uh, solder wire so what you would use when you have your solder you know iron and uh, um, so I would suggest though that um, you look at you, you get in contact with Stanul directly. Actually, we are not so much involved in in, in distributing um, the um, the solder anymore. Number one, just by. Can you repeat the question, please? Because the mic was yes. on. Okay, so there is no product on the market at the moment which you can recommend uh, for soldering paste. Uh, Stanul, Stanul do, do have their own product line they call Fair Tin. So that is tin um, with a kind of traceable origin um, following best, practice, best, best practices in, 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 in mining. Um, so that might be an option for you. Yeah. Okay, we have question number two. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you very much for your talk. I was wondering if you've um, have you gotten in t contact with uh, so purchasing organizations, because in supply chains nowadays, um, you often have a service provider that is in between the producer who buys his products and the uh, and the um, the vendors 
and often these uh, purchasing service providers uh, are asked to help control the supply chain. Hmm. Um, we, we haven't actually, and um, uh, to, to be honest, I, I think we need to start at the point where there is some kind of momentum. And for us, I think it's easier to reach um, people like you, uh, you know, maybe hardware developers or maybe small enterprises or maybe just activists. Um, because, uh, I mean, the, I, I, I cannot really make really broad statements, but I think um, big parts of the, the whole industry are kind of conservative when it comes to like stuff like sustainability, and we kind of have to work our way through there, I think. Okay. Um, we have question number three there. One second. Yes, please, number yeah. three. Uh, first of all, thank you for your talk. And my question is, you used a relative approach uh, regarding the evaluation of the impact category, and I was wondering if there was a specific reason for that, or if, uh, um, I mean, you could have instead just evaluated the absolute value by which you compare the different countries mm. of origin? You mean to, to have some kind of reference point and say, okay, it's yes. better or worse than the server reference point. Um, the approach that I showed you right now is our starting point, uh, where we are following some, well, an approach that, or modeling after approach that we found in literature, and that seems doable for us right now within this six, six month uh, time frame that we have to arrive at a full prototype but it's not fixed. So certainly the whole methodology can still be uh, improved. So yeah, that's pretty much what I can say to that. Yeah. Thank you. Fine, thank you. Um, yes, sir, please. Question, hello. My question also concerns the relative impact approach mm -hmm. uh, that analyzes, for example, with the mouse, uh, which countries and which materials from these countries mm. uh, had an impact. And I was also wondering if except for the country of origin and its world market share and also the uh, share of weight in the product, as you showed with copper, as if you're also taking into consideration other uh, factors, for example, the um, rarity and different impacts of uh, materials, for example, copper being more common than tantalum, as you mentioned. And if you would consider adding that as an additional factor into your analysis. Okay. Uh, right now, we do, we do not consider it, uh, but one could s certainly think about it. Uh, maybe we can talk about later about this this idea. Would be great. Yeah. That's fine. Um, do we have questions online? No one. They're all asleep. I see someone here at number two. Please, sir. Yeah. Hi there. Um, I'm also a prototype fund recipient. It's really really cool mm -hmm. to see them doing all this nice this awesome stuff. Uh, I am an, a, a happy Fairphone owner, and I also have another non-Fairphone, and the Fairphone was twice the price of the other one, and whenever I ask people, or they ask me which one should I get, I say, like, well, do you want to spend twice? That's what you have to get yourself into. Um, in the fact that, in the face that we have this failure market-wise, do you see any role for regulation to actually make it easier for people who build things like this to do the right thing? Because when you speak to small businesses, the thing that I always have pushed back at me is that we cannot make this viable at these prices, so we're forced to use all the non-fair uh, parts in our electronics. Hmm. So, um, concerning regulation, yesterday I gave a lightning talk on the Lieferketten Gazettes. Well, there's a, right now there's a broad NGO um, campaign going on that is trying to establish um, uh, mandatory human rights due diligence um, in Germany, but also there are initiatives in other countries, such as uh, Switzerland. Um, France already has a supply chain law and so on, and there are also like some processes on the EU and, and UN levels. So um, I think that is, I mean, that, but, but that is basically the, the bare minimum, right? I mean, uh, not violating human rights should actually not be like, something great. It should be, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, should be something everyone does. Um, yeah, okay. So. That, that's absolutely the point, actually, in, in our lifestyle, Western world, hooked up to electronics, and yeah, we can't live without it, but 
Uh, I had a question as well for you. I think there is another one. Otherwise, I have a question. But number three, please, you can. Hello, I have a question about the lack of data. You said you need more data and you asked for uh, data sheets of uh, parts. But I think you also need more data about metals or working conditions. Do you have the top three data, what you would appreciate based on the metals or on the working conditions in, in countries, for example? Probably we can provide you with that. Mm. Uh, it would be hard to, to tell th something about the top three. It's just, well, we, right now we are at a state where we think, okay, on a very generic level, we can cover most of the minerals that are re relevant. We can uh, cover most of the countries, but of, or most of the indicators. For the indicators, there are still a lot of gaps. Uh, well, that you maybe you can you find an indicator for child labor, but it covers only 20 countries and not all of the countries. Um, so on this level, um, yeah, on a very generic level, we are quite complete, but. Then a good next step, for example, would be to get data that is more specific to, to industries and not only on a country level. So that would be great. In general, it's just, well, we need more of everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also so components and what raw materials we constitute. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, as Tamara just said, well, uh, co the component composition is more, maybe more the, the more severe lack that we have right now. So the more generic it is, the less accurate mm. is the analysis. Right. Yeah. Um, may I, I have a question as well? We still have a few minutes left, but uh, did you mention uh, how you're financed or backed, or did you do that? I think I did. <laughs> I'm not sure of it, but there's also the yeah. logo. <laughs> And, and uh, th this brings you till with which stage, uh, meaning till the product is there, or is there something in the future waiting? Okay. It, I, oh, till the end of February, this uh, round, round is yeah. called, yeah, is, is finished. So we want to have a minimal viable prototype at that point, but I think all of us would be happy to um, see more of that in the future. Right, so, so basically the, 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 the period where we're being funded by Prototype Fund is almost over, it's until February, um, but uh, Fairlöted will, 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 will try to keep the project going as, as best as possible, so we're also trying to build a small developer community around it. Um, yeah, and let's see what happens then. Yeah. yeah, and so spread the word, I would say, so that you have more data as well in, mm -hmm. in your database uh, before the end of February. Yeah. So um, I would ask everyone, to give a warm applause and remember, give them the data and they can bring it further. Thank you. Thank you guys for the Thank you. fantastic. Fairtronics.org. Check it out.